Namaste. And here's another episode of Yoga Vasishta, the vanity of the world. O oh, sage, this seemingly pleasing but actually unpleasant world has nothing in it that produces tranquility to the soul. After playful boyhood is over, the mind wastes itself in the society of women like a deer fallen into a pit. Then the body bends down under old age and man has only to grieve. As the body is stricken with the frost of old age, its beauty flies away like the bloom of a fading lotus flower, and then the fountain of man's worldliness dries up. As the body declines, death rejoices. The body grows lean with gray hairs upon the head, just as a vine fades away with flowers upon it. All living creatures are carried away by the stream of greed that flows forever in this world, eroding its bank and upsetting the tree of contentment growing on it. We all want to be content and happy. Yet, this world is constantly eroding like land under a flood. Uh, just like we're seeing in Texas right now, tremendous rains and flood. Uh, well, of course, they're building on a floodplain, the idiots. <laughs> But this is the way of the world. Man wants to do something for his own pleasure, ignoring the benefit of others or the well-being of the world and nature, the health of the ecosystem and so on. And so he does all kinds of nonsense things, huh? drills into the ground and uh, extracts the oil and that reduces the, the shock absorbers of the Earth from the planetary gravitational tides, creating earthquakes. Huh? And now with fracking, they're actually starting to understand this is true. Huh? But Gurdjieff knew it a century ago. So how the people don't listen to the wise. Huh? This has always been... Uh, so hard for me to understand. When you encounter a being who is more intelligent, more able, and happier, more satisfied than you are, you listen to what they have to say. Because <laughs> obviously they're doing it right. Huh? Their life is better than yours. Their condition is better than yours. So isn't it logical? <laughs> that you would listen to what they have to say, the advice they have to give, the instructions that they offer. Doesn't that make sense? It makes sense to me. I did when I met my guru. When I was in my early 20s, I was going up and down the west coast of the United States, stopping in all these spiritual centers and checking out the many gurus that were available. And I came to the conclusion that they were phony. <laughs> they weren't any different than me. Huh? Yeah, they had a nice wardrobe. <laughs> and maybe they were better looking than me. <laughs> and <laughs> they had some uh, line of, of jive <laughs> that they were giving. Maybe they had a couple of little methods that anybody could learn in a day or two. But none of them really had a different quality of being until I met my spiritual master. Uh, my music teacher, Ali Akbar Khan, introduced me to my Adi Guru, Srila Prabhupada, in San Francisco in 1968. And so as soon as I met him, I knew there was no doubt in my mind. Here's someone in an exalted state of being a high state of consciousness. I knew that I didn't understand him. I knew that I couldn't live like him or even follow his instructions to his disciples because <laughs> I was too addicted to sense enjoyment. It took me three years to get myself to the point where I could let go of my current lifestyle 
as a musician and adopt the life of a yogi. And since then, I've never looked back. The human body is like a vessel covered with skin floating on the ocean of the world, tossed about by sensual pleasures, swamped by water, pressured by its whale-like passions. The world is a wilderness abounding in vines of greed and trees of sensuality, with hundreds of desires as their branches. Our minds are like monkeys that pass their time wandering about this forest without finding fruit. Those who do not yield to grief during troubles, who are not elated with prosperity or smitten at heart by women, are rare in this world. Those who fight boldly in battlefields and withstand war elephants are not so very brave, in my opinion, as those who withstand the surges of the mind amidst the streams of carnal appetites. I see no deeds in the world that endure to the final liberation of men. Actions proceeding from a fool's desire for results serve only for their restlessness on earth. Wow, this is great. I love it. So, men who are not yielding to grief during troubles or becoming elated during prosperity and who are not smitten by the opposite sex <laughs> or bewildered by the constant changes due to time in this world are very rare. Huh? One time my, <laughs> my guru said, I wasn't there, but I heard about it. He said, the difference between you and me is that I could be in a room full of naked women and not be disturbed. <laughs> because he knew very well, he had realized quite thoroughly that this world will never give any happiness. Huh? People are like monkeys wandering in the forest, searching for fruits, but never finding any. We want this, we want that. We want happiness, we want satisfaction, we want peace. But we can't find those things in this world. Or if we do, they're only temporary and they're imperfect. They're never real, really what we're looking for. So why do we keep looking here? Why do we keep following our desires again and again when all our experience should tell us that it's going to end up in frustration? Because we are ignorant and we don't know any other way. Face it. That's the truth. So how to overcome this ignorance? We have to approach one who knows, one who is realized, one who has knowledge and listen, hear from him, understand his lessons. What is he trying to tell us? And put them into practice. This is not just academic. I'm not just doing this to, to read from some old book huh? or to gain a, a followers or anything like that. Followers are another, <laughs> another big Maya. Huh? There's all these people going around imitating being a guru and so they get a bunch of followers who are imitating being disciples. <laughs> it's great, huh? The karma, it's just perfect. I'm going to pretend to be your guru. Now you pretend to be my disciple and we'll just stroke each other's egos. But what happens is the so-called disciples eventually betray their so-called guru. They turn on him. Uh, they become haters and critics. And they may even, like this guru in North India who just got convicted of rape, huh? maybe they even take him to court, put him in jail. Those are the disciples we get nowadays. So there's no use in this guru game. There's, there's no use to pretending to be a disciple because to simply listen to lectures and not put it into practice is hypocrisy 
and ignorance. Nobody knows the true cause of this mysterious existence. The revolution of the world is like the floating bubbles of rainwater. They appear lasting only to the ignorant observer. The blooming beauty and graces of youth are destined to be snatched away at the approach of old age. The youthful hopes of men fly away like the blooms of lotus buds in winter. The tree ordained to be useful to mankind by the loads of flowers and fruit that it produces in the end is also fated to be hewn down by a cruel axe. How then can good men expect to avoid the cruel hand of death? Society with relatives is as dangerous as a poisonous plant. It is pleasant for its domestic affections, which in reality are only delusions of the soul. What is there in the world without fault in it? What is there that does not afflict or grieve us? What is born that is not subject to death? What acts are free from deceit? And the answer is none, 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 none. There is nothing in this world that is really of any value except teachings that bring us to realization of the absolute truth. Those have some value. But even that value is passing because once we attain realization, there's no more need for the teaching either. So many teachings I have learned and understood and practiced and realized and then given up. Because once you have the fruit, you don't need the tree. Once you're up on the roof, you don't need the ladder. Well, you forget about it, neglect it, walk away, isn't it? Once we have what we want in this world, we give up the means to getting it. This is a common problem. Everyone knows the feeling of being used. Huh? Someone will come along and act friendly, and then when they get what they want, they dump us. We've seen it happen. It's happened to us so many times, isn't it? So why should we trust these relations in the world? Why should we put our hopes on something which is bound to disappoint? Why don't we find those people who actually know the truth and who display the symptoms of realization and associate with them and learn from them? Why don't we find those teachings that lead to transcendence and follow them, implement them in our lives and get the results? I think the, the only possible answer is ignorance or insanity. <laughs> so if we don't follow, once hearing this truth, if we don't accept it and follow it, the only possible conclusion is that we are insane. We're nuts. Or we're totally ignorant and foolish. Because we would be acting against our own best interest against our own happiness, against our own satisfaction. And only a fool would do that, right? <laughs> so I know people will hear these words and then they'll just simply forget about it and go on with their life just the way they were before. And I feel very sorry for you if, if you're in that category. If you're the 999 out of a thousand who will see this video and simply walk away and ignore it. Huh? It's not my problem. It's yours. <laughs> so don't be the 999. Be the one who gets it. Ong Tat Sat. Aum Harihi Aum.
கருணார்ணவமாய் கருதக்கதி நல்கும் அருணாச்சல சிவம் கீதா